Hi everybody, welcome to another edition of the Best Thing in Community, where we cover the amazing events, organizations, and today, the amazing cities that surround our county and beyond, and bring them to you through social media. And today, I'm with the lovely Haley Glasgow. Hi Mark. Good morning everybody. Reno is about 22 miles from Lake Tahoe, and about 67 miles from Nevada City. It's known as the biggest little city in Reno, the famous Reno Arch behind us. Reno is famous for its hotels and casinos. There's about 20 casinos right here in Reno, yielding about $600 million in revenue. So today we're gonna to take a look at the casinos, the auto museum, there's a national bowling center here. They got tons to offer, so we're gonna cover it all in today's edition. Are you ready to go? I'm ready, are you, Mark? Flat me five. All right, Haley and I in Reno. McDonald's spokesperson for Reno Tahoe. We're at the large convention center in Reno. Um, what is a typical event that happens here? Well, the Reno Sparse Convention Center is 600,000 square feet, so typically we host larger events here. A lot of uh, NorCal volleyball events are held here each year, jam on at basketball events. We also do large association events from across the country. We have a very important ag department show coming up this season. Uh, as well as other, other very large shows. Typically 15,000 to 20,000 people is what we host here at the Reno Sparks Convention Center. So Ben, why would an organization pick Reno over any other destination city? Well, there's so many advantages to this destination. First of all, value. Um, our room rates are still considerably lower than most destinations in the West. We have large casino resorts that have multiple restaurants, world-class spas, great pools, uh, excellent dining, and also our Midtown area is really growing up. So we have outdoor entertainment, we have indoor entertainment, we have great restaurants, the river runs right through the heart of downtown Reno, and during the wintertime you have ski resorts that are out of this world. So I think the total package is really what sets Reno apart, as well as the cost. Thank you for speaking with us today, Ben. Thank you so much. So here we are, downtown Reno, and one of the places to go is the National Auto Museum. Uh, Haley? Well, many people have heard of Harris Hotels and Casinos, but not everybody knows about that. The founder, Bill Hara, was a car collector, and Hara had collected over 1,400 cars before he died. There's 200 cars here at the National uh, Museum. We're going to talk to Miss Jackie Frady, the director of the museum, and I think it's going to be a real interesting conversation. You ready to go? I'm ready. Are you? All right, let's do it. So I'm here with Jackie Frady, the director of the National Auto Museum. Jackie, tell me, what is the National Automobile Museum? It's one of the top 10 auto museums in the nation, and it's home to the world famous 1907 Thomas Flyer, which is right behind us. It's the winner of the 1908 New York to Paris race. Jackie, what can visitors expect when at the museum? They'll stroll down the historic street settings and explore galleries filled with 200 remarkable cars from the very earliest horseless carriages to priceless antiques and even one-of-a-kind experimental cars. Thank you for speaking with us today. It was a pleasure. Thank you. So Haley and I, downtown Reno, Reno's kind of a funny name, but it has an interesting story about how the name got applied to the city. Well, Reno is named after someone who never even visited the area. Maryland native Jesse Lee Reno was an army officer and Union general during the Civil War who died after being shot in the chest by a friendly fire during the Battle of South Mountain in Maryland. Some of his buddies appealed to name the railroad station in a newly forming western town after him, a common way of honoring folks back then. Incidentally, Reno wasn't even his real name. It was Renault, which people apparently had trouble pronouncing. And yes, he was distantly related to the family that later founded the car company. I was going to ask about that. So, other facts to know about Reno is every July, for more than a decade, they have the superhero crawl. That's where Wonder Woman, Batman, Spider-Man 
Captain America have journeyed from bar to bar in an annual competition. Okay, it's also home to the National Bowling Stadium, the 363,000 square foot five-story building behind us. Right? Yeah. There you go. We're on to the casino. So Haley and I at the Silver Legacy, yes, Reno is all about casinos, but there's also all sorts of things that the casinos have that entice the family to come. And the Silver Legacy has a brand new spa, $12 million in renovations. It's actually a brand new spa. And so Haley, what do you think? I think it sounds great. We're going to talk to the director, George Paul Lopez. Tell us a little bit more about it. All right. Sounds good. Ready to go? Sounds great. I'm here with George Paul Lopez, the director of Spa and Wellness here at the Silver Legacy. Tell me, how do you differentiate your spa from any other? Well, what I think is really important is that uh, we have based it on the region and customer service. Um, it is really important for us to really take the person into consideration first and then provide them with an area of relaxation, rejuvenation, and just really uh, take them to an experience level that they haven't had before. So, George, when developing the menu, what did you have in mind? Well, one of the things that I really wanted to do is I wanted to tie in the Reno and Lake Tahoe indigenous items and really like take that by the horns and really make sure that the people around here understand that we have something that's really popular. Um, Lake Tahoe and Reno are symbiotic, so we kept the menu in, in that force, so really going towards that aspect of it. Thank you, George. Thank you.